Today, we are gonna answer the question, how important are Altissimo fingerings and do they really matter? There is a free PDF download of the Altissimo fingerings that I use on the Alto Sax. So if that's something that you'd like to check out, I'll put the link in the video description below. If you've ever watched a tutorial on Altissimo, then you have most likely heard the saxophone player or saxophone teacher say that Altissimo fingerings aren't really that important. What is super important is your voicing or tongue position. And that is 100% true. So to answer the big question, do Altissimo fingerings really matter? Yes, but not nearly as much as you would think. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna dive pretty deep into why Altissimo fingerings are important, but your tongue position is way more important than anything else when it comes to getting your Altissimo notes to sound. If I play a low G, as long as I blow air into the saxophone, pretty much no matter what I do, no matter how incorrect it is with my embouchure or the way I have the saxophone facing, something close or at least in the realm of a low G is gonna come out. It might not sound good, but you can tell that it is a low G. Now, when it comes to altissimo, that is not the case. If I finger an altissimo G, which I'm gonna do one, three, one, side B flat and E flat, there's a lot going on with that fingering. Um, if I finger that note and my tongue is not in the perfect position, that note will not come out. I'm gonna get what I call a FERP. What gets those notes out is the correct tongue position. Some people call that voicing. So if your tongue is not in the exact position for that altissimo G to come out, it will not come out. So this is what it sounds like when my tongue is in the right place. And this is what it sounds like when my tongue is too low. So tongue position is extremely important when it comes to altissimo notes. If your tongue is not in the right position, that note will not sound. Now let's talk about the importance of fingerings and why they are important, but not nearly as important as you would think. So when it comes to fingering an altissimo A, there are two really traditional fingerings that most people use. The first is two, three, one, two, three. That's the one that works really well on my saxophone. And this is what it sounds like. For me, that altissimo A fingering is perfectly in tune. But another common fingering for altissimo A is just two, three without the right hand. So just two, three without one, two, three in the right hand. On my saxophone, this note is really flat. This is what it sounds like. So if I use the altissimo fingering that works for me on this saxophone, that, uh, that altissimo A pops out in tune with no problem at all. And when I use a different fingering, it doesn't really sound that great. But here's the thing, and this is why your tongue position is so important. Even when I play that second, second fingering where it's really flat, with a very small adjustment from my tongue, I can get that note in tune with no problem at all. So even though I'm using a fingering that doesn't really work that well on my saxophone, if I have my tongue in the right position, that note is gonna pop out. So that's why using the correct fingering is important and can definitely make your life a lot easier, but also why your tongue is the ultimate decider of what pitch comes out and how easy it is to get it in or out of tune. If you enjoy my YouTube content, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and click that bell for notifications. Also, comments are always welcomed and appreciated. Here's an even bigger example of what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna play an altissimo B flat and only using my tongue position, my voicing, I'm gonna turn that altissimo B flat into an altissimo G. Here is an altissimo B flat fingering followed by an altissimo G fingering so you can hear what it's supposed to sound like. In this next example, I'm gonna finger an altissimo B flat the entire time, and I'm gonna just change my tongue position and change that altissimo B flat down to an altissimo G. 
So again, your tongue position is the ultimate decider of what note comes out, no matter what note you finger. Now, of course, when I do the G fingering to get the G to come out, it's gonna be a lot easier. Same with the high B or the altissimo B flat fingering. If I use the correct fingering, it's gonna make it even easier, but the tongue is the most important thing when it comes to altissimo. So let's take this even further. When I play and use the fingering for an altissimo G, just by adjusting my tongue and moving it up a little bit higher, I can get other notes that are inside of that altissimo G. And those notes are a part of the same overtone series. So just by raising my tongue up a little bit, I'm gonna be able to get a few of the notes that are also inside of that G that are part of the same uh, overtone series. So here is an altissimo G. And this is what happens when I play the altissimo G and I raise my tongue up to get other notes in that overtone series to sound. This is the reason why you hear saxophone teachers constantly talk about how important the overtone series is, how important it is to practice your overtones, especially if you want to get really good at altissimo. It's because the better you can control your tongue position and your voicing, the easier it's gonna to be to play these altissimo notes and have them sound as a functional part of your saxophone playing. To answer a question that I know I'm gonna get in the comments, is it the same on alto and tenor? Yes, it is the exact same on alto and tenor. Your tongue position is always gonna be the decider of the notes, but of course, your fingerings are gonna make life a lot easier. Now, something that I should mention about fingerings is they can vary from saxophone to saxophone, even from mouthpiece to mouthpiece when you're changing gear, and they definitely can vary a lot from alto to tenor to soprano to berry. So for each saxophone, you might need to tweak your fingering so that they fit the saxophone that you're using. Now, let's take this to an extreme. I am gonna finger an altissimo A and just randomly wiggle my fingers really fast so that I'm not gonna have any fingering at all. But as I do this, because my tongue position is in the correct position for the altissimo A to sound, it's pretty much gonna sound like an altissimo A the entire time. There'll be some warbles and some sound disruptions in there, but for the most part, it's just gonna sound like an altissimo A, even though my fingers are going crazy. Now, if I do the exact same thing, but this time while I'm wiggling my fingers around randomly and crazily, and I move my tongue up and down, so I'm changing my voicing, it's gonna sound like I'm playing a crazy altissimo run. So yes, your fingerings are important to get you in the ballpark of the note that you actually want to play, but the ultimate decider of the pitch that comes out is your tongue position. Here's a quick little poll. Do you think it's easier to play altissimo on the alto sax or the tenor sax? For me personally, the alto sax is a whole lot easier, but in giving lessons all these years, my tenor players tend to pop out that their altissimo notes a little bit quicker than the alto players. So which do you think is easier, alto or tenor? Leave your answer in the comments as well as what your first altissimo note was. If you'd like to dive deeper into the world of altissimo with some step-by-step -step lessons, I do have a course in the Scott Paddock Sack School called Ultimate Altissimo, where I take you step-by-step -step from getting your first altissimo note to sound to making it a functional part of your playing. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, check out the Scott Paddock Sax School. There is a link in the video description below. Check out this video next if you are looking for a tutorial on how to get your first altissimo notes to sound.